Good morning, gang. Happy Friday morning. Happy March 1st. Yeah, we are three months into this already. So how many of you feel like you're being played for a fool? That the powers that be, whether corporate, whether political, whatever, are lying to you? Probably everybody. Okay. Let's take a look at a little bit of what's going on. Uh, how many of you guys remember... 2008, 2008, 2009, the Great Recession. Okay. I know I certainly do. It was a hell of a time for me. This is not only did the economy collapse, this is when I started going through a divorce. In 2008, I was working as a recruiter. I was five years into my career as a recruiter at that point. In 2008 was the best year I was having ever. Mind you, recruiting is a commission-based business. Okay. In October, I posted my best, October of 2008, I posted my best month ever in my career. Okay. People were hiring. I was placing people. It was good. By July of 2009, 75% of my business went poof, disappeared, okay? Three quarters of my business gone in eight months, nine months, okay? We were lied to. Companies thought things were good. The people thought things were good. And then all of a sudden, the bottom fell out. It's kind of the exact same thing that's going on now. Those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Now, the elites, they won't get hurt. I mean, just look what happened at uh, Citigroup yesterday. They announced more layoffs. The company posted like a 30% loss in profits for 2023. More people are going to lose their job. The CEO got a 6% pay raise. Hmm, interesting. Our business is down one-third, but you're worth more money. The elites will do fine. Yesterday, <clears throat> testifying to Congress, Hunter Biden pro finally acknowledged that Joe was the big guy. Won't acknowledge that he was getting kickbacks, but you know the evidence is already there. The elites won't hurt. You and I will. Now, You've heard me talk about, you've heard many people talk about on YouTube, you've heard many economists talk about that we're, we're going to see a crash this year. Okay. A lot, everybody's talking second quarter, third quarter. Okay. Guys, that's a couple of months away. Why do we say this? Well, let's take a look at what happened in 2008 and see if it's paralleling to what ha what's going on now. Okay, the first thing you want to look at is GDP, gross domestic product, right? And what did they do in 2008? Oh, the GDP was doing good up until they come back and say, like every other time, oh, we have to revise the numbers, and they get revised downward. Let's take a look at what's come out this week about the 2023 GDP. Guess what? It was revised downward. The economy wasn't doing as good as they initially said. Hmm. Sounds exactly like what happened in 20, uh, 2008. Employment figures, Bureau of Labor Statistics, they will say, oh, people are going to work. People are going to work. And then, of course, those numbers get revised downward. Guess what's going on now? Same thing. This month, we heard, again, about 2023 numbers, or this month, last month, obviously, because it's March 1st, revised downward. Not as many people wound up working as initially thought. We all knew that was coming because they count somebody holding two jobs as two people working. That ain't how it works. Okay, So when they got to the numbers on the amount of people employed, 
downward. This is why I talk about all the time that the labor participation rate is more important than the unemployment rate. Okay. Third one, the banking sectors and the financial sectors metrics. Let's take a look at this. I just told you what's going on at Citigroup. I mentioned yesterday, Mark Zuckerberg selling shares of Facebook, Jeff Bezos selling shares of Amazon, Bob Iger selling shares of Disney, Warren Buffett moving to cash. Hmm. Okay. What did we hear last year? Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, was it Synchronicity Bank? You know, all these banks blowing up. Yeah. Okay. Again, this is what we have in problems for the economy. Let's look at the fourth one. Housing market data. Okay. Data on home sales, on prices, on construction starts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Guess what's going on there? People can't afford to buy houses. We don't have enough houses. Take out the illegal part, okay, the illegal immigration, okay. But there aren't, there aren't the houses. And the ones that are there are so ridiculously expensive, people can't afford them so they don't move, okay? Again, remember what the trigger was in 2008. There were a whole bunch of houses that went up foreclosed on. Why? Because interest rates went up. And so many people were like, oh, I've got an adjustable rate mortgage. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, we can't afford this mortgage. Well, let's take a look at what's going on in the market now. Foreclosures are up, okay? You know, again, we're seeing the same thing that happened in 2008, 2009. Last one, consumer confidence in spending. Consumer confidence is down. Credit card debt is at an all-time high. Spending hasn't stopped yet. People are just doing it with other people's money. Buy now, pay later has wound up huge, right? You see this everywhere. Go, you know, you want to buy something and you see the little thing for use a firm, you know, or whatever other one is, you know, buy now, pay later. You can have this for $36 in monthly payments or go look at the interest rates, okay? Might as well go to a payday loan place. People are borrowing to buy necessities. People are financing their groceries. This is all leading to exactly the same thing that we saw in 2008, 2009. Now I'll give you this as a thought. We never came out of the Great Recession. 2008, 2009 has still been going on. It looks like we did because they made basically money free, okay, for 15 years, you've had damn near 0% interest rates. You have nearly an entire generation who grew up. I mean, think about it. If you were 20 years old, just or let's say 22 years old and just finishing college in 2008, you know, you're 38 years old now. Your kids are tweens. You've been in your house for five, 10 years, maybe already married, you know, your life has taken a big change. And for the first time in your adult life, you've seen interest rates that are historically normal. Okay. But nobody was used to that. You know, when's the last time you saw a finance your car 0% for 60 months or whatever? You haven't seen that in years. Why? Because interest rates are up. These are all the same precursors that we saw going into 2008, 2009. And if you remember what happened to the stock market, if you remember what happened to the housing market, if you remember what happened to the overall economy, everything came and crashed. This was the first time we heard, remember, stimulus checks to, so people could afford groceries, so people might be able to 
pay a little bit in their bills. What would we get back then? $300 a person or something, $600 a couple, and then there was extra if you had kids or something like that. You know, go back. Okay, obviously inflation's come into play since then. But that's what it's going to take again. Can you imagine what happens to our economy with another another round of stimmy checks? We're looking at this inflation right now that in Joe's tenure is probably now the three years combined. It's pushing somewhere around 50%. Let's do that again. This is the problem we have. We're pissing all this money away in Ukraine. We're pissing all this money away in the Middle East. We're pissing all this money away in Taiwan. We're letting in nearly 10 million illegals and giving them free stuff everywhere. It's got to stop. It will blow up. You know, there's only so far we can borrow from our grandchildren to keep the economy afloat. One of these days, our kids and our grandkids will wake up and realize, hey, I'm 36 years old and I'm still living in mom and dad's house. I don't want to be here anymore. Why can't I be? And maybe they'll think about that when they go, hmm, let's see. Since 2008, who's been basically running the country? Oh, that would be the great black dope and then the great white dope. We had a reprieve for four years from 2016 to 2020 where the economy actually got better where unemployment actually went down. You know, what was it? Historic lows for black unemployment, Hispanic unemployment, women's unemployment. It, those days disappeared January 21st, 2021. Okay. If we look at trying to save ourselves and save our families... Be ready for it. Have everything put back that's going to cost you money. Get your bills paid. Get that safety fund, that emergency fund built up. Again, six months minimum worth of bills. I mean, and I know that's a lot of freaking money. You know, you talk about pay your mortgage, your car payment, your insurance, your electric, your phone, your internet or whatever. I mean, all of a sudden you go, crap, that's $2,000, $2,500 a month, if not more, okay? You go, shit, that's $12,000, $15,000 I've got to have put back. I know it sounds crazy, but go back and remember 2008, 2009, and how many people who didn't have that done lost their homes, lost their cars, lost their jobs, okay? I lost my home, too, because of the divorce, you know, couldn't all of a sudden afford the house on my own. <clears throat> yeah. It's getting scary, guys. And you need to take this seriously. I mean, I know everybody, most of the country just has their head in the sand. And I go, it'll get better. I just got to ride it out. I just got to ride it out. Yeah, that's like skiing in an avalanche. Eventually, you will get to the bottom just depends on how far you're buried when you get there. And we'll out.